My name is Jeff Moriarty, and welcome to Ignite Phoenix number eight. All right. Cheers. Who's, who's been to one of these crazy things before? All right. Who's here for the first time? All right. Well, let me tell you a little bit about how this works. This is about sharing ideas and sharing passion. Anyone can submit. We had about 70 submissions, and 18 people are going to take this stage and get five minutes and 20 slides to share their ideas with you. In addition, if you have not looked in your program, look now. There is an amazing CD of 10 songs donated by local musicians, incredible variety of music, in addition to the presentations up here tonight. It's amazing stuff. So what do you do with all this? You're going to see a bunch of exciting people talk tonight. You're going to listen to some great music. I'm up here to give you a little bit of context on what this means to me. And I'm going to do it with somebody um, that I viewed as sort of a hero growing up, Mr. Bruce Lee. Well, thank you. Not only one of the greatest martial artists of the 20th century, but a bit of a philosopher in his own right, and someone who always believed in pushing his boundaries and limits. There's a, a parable in martial arts of a student who goes to the master uh, to learn. And everything the master tries to teach him, the student argues with and pushes back against. And the master is so frustrated, he goes and he's pouring tea for the student. He just keeps pouring and pouring and pouring. And the teacup just overflows. And the student says, stop, stop. And the master says, this teacup is like your mind. This is you. And until you're willing to empty it and let somebody else put something in, you're never going to learn. And Bruce loved water as a metaphor in many things he did, because it is so adaptable. One minute it can flow gently, and the next minute it can crash. You put it in a bottle, and it takes the shape of the bottle. You put it in a teacup, and it takes the shape of the teacup. And Bruce himself had to be very adaptable. He had one leg a full inch shorter than the other. A huge obstacle for a world-class martial artist to overcome. But he did, by doing weight training and other techniques that he brought to bear on his martial arts. He was also, little known fact, once the cha-cha champion of Hong Kong. Very hard to say, but he took all this dance and brought it into his martial arts. Very adaptable in taking things from wherever he could learn them. But Bruce also knew that sometimes we are our own worst enemies, and especially our big brains, and specifically our preconceptions. Example, there was a study recently where they took people who believed uh, global warming was a fact, and they divided them up into two groups. And they gave each of them a list of scientists and all their credentials, same list. And they told this group, these scientists believe in global warming. They agree with you. And they told these scientists, or th this group, these scientists disagree with you. Now, based on whether they agreed with you or not, you thought they were geniuses or you thought they were morons. This is called confirmation bias. This is one of the many, many tricks that our brains play on us and that you have to put aside if you really want to learn new things. This is just a fraction of the cognitive biases you'll find on Wikipedia. It's amazing reading. We're not as smart as we think we is. <laughs> go, go look some of these up. They're incredible. Bruce also was a big believer in pushing yourself. Not just when things were difficult and you had to, but when you were comfortable. It's important to do this. Think about our history. What if Lewis and Clark had said, you know what? We're pretty comfortable. We're not going to go out on the frontier. I don't see anything but grizzly bears there. What if the uh, Apollo astronauts had said, you know, Earth is nice. I don't see a reason to go to the moon. Dead rock, no. Individually, we like our comfort. But as a society, as a species, we depend on those who push, our, push themselves and go outside of their comfort zone. But what you miss is someone to come along and fill your cup. Even if you're willing to learn, someone has to provide something for you to add. And that's what these people and that music is going to do. They're giving you a gift. So what you need to do is cheer when these people come on this stage and support them. This is hard, and from down here, you all are a little scary. I won't lie to you and show them that you respect what they've come here to do and their beliefs, even if you disagree. What I ask, in addition to turning off cell phones, is that <laughs> you adapt some of these things to your life, you challenge your preconceptions, and you push yourself a little bit with what you see and learn here tonight. Now, my time on the stage is done, and if I can get a seriously big round of applause, I will bring out the first <laughs> presenter and kick off at night, Phoenix, number eight.